Welcome everyone to the update on interest rates market. I am Hemant Kanawala and I will brief you on recent developments globally as well as domestic and its impact on bond markets. Due to Brexit, the fall and rising of oil prices and the US elections, bond yields globally have had a volatile year. However, on the other end, INR yields continue to drift lower helped by drop in inflation of RBI and neutral liquidity approach. Yields on government bonds are almost 100 bps lower from the start of the fiscal year. Today we will shed lights on three important developments in recent times and its immediate and medium term impacts. Let's start with the first, the change of guard at RBI. Government appointed Dr. Urjit Patil as new governor of RBI who succeeded the outgoing governor Dr. Raghuram Rajan. Dr. Rajan's team has been uploaded globally. He ensured domestic macroeconomic stability. He along with government support ensured the rebuilding of foreign exchange reserves currently at $365 billion. The current account deficit came down to 1.5% of GDP from almost 4% plus and inflation dropped significantly during his tenure. Bond yields witnessed a sharp fall of more than 100 bips and RBI also reduced rates by 125 bips during his tenure. Dr. Patil, who worked with Dr. Rajan, has been a key player in the RBI's war on inflation. His appointment has seen continuity on policy front. Dr. Patil, along with the newly appointed Monetary Policy Committee, decided to cut interest by 25 bips in the October policy. With the recent cut, RBI rate stands at 6.25%. The expected drop in inflation from 5% to 4.5% in next fiscal can open more room for easing in coming months. Now let's talk about the most recent happenings. Government banned high denomination currency notes. At the stroke of midnight between November 8th and 9th, rupees 500 and rupees 1000 currency notes ceased to exist as legal tender. It is estimated that rupees 500 and rupees 1000 notes account for about 86% of total currency around Rs. 17 trillion in circulation. From macro point of view, the surge in currency leakage since last two years may have been one more factor for this move. The move is largely directed against black money, corruption and counterfeits. It is also aimed to move towards the digitization. We have witnessed a good surge in deposits in the banking system, which resulted in improvement in liquidity conditions. We may see near-term impact on consumption, especially in rural India. However, in medium term, we can expect higher transparency, higher public revenue collections, lower inflation and lower interest rates. The full impact of the move will be understood only in subsequent weeks after December 30. Now moving to global news that took almost everyone by surprise, the USA presidential election outcome. Mr. Donald Trump has been elected as the 45th president of United States of America. The Trump campaign has suggested high infrastructure spending, deporting illegal immigrants, especially from Mexico, raising import tariffs on China, and reworking trade agreements. Mr. Trump will work around these policy moves to tackle inequality problems between Americans. We see Mr. Trump's victory adding enormous uncertainty in financial markets. The trade policies, if implemented, can disturb the trade order. It can lead to trade renegotiation between nations, which may lead to immediate impact on growth rates. The expansionary fiscal policy will increase government debt and could lead to faster rate hikes by the Federal Reserve due to rising inflation. Bond yields have already risen 25 to 30 years globally, sympathizing with Treasury yields. 10-year yields are trading at 2.1%, up from 1.75% before election. German yields have also hardened from 0.1% to 0.3%. Bond markets were already feared of fiscal moves as easy monetary policy is seen falling to revive global growth and inflation. Let's talk about the overall effects of these events. Bond yields have dropped by almost 100 bips in the current fiscal, helped by RBI OMO purchases, lower inflation and the current demonetization scheme. We see bond yields to remain supported amid ample liquidity and lower inflation. Yields can inch up in case the RBI decides to sterilize surplus liquidity through OMO sales since RBI OMO sales will add to duration supply. Bond markets are expecting a 25 to 50 bips rate reduction from RBI in next 3 to 6 months. 
10 year government of india bond should hence tra trade in the range of 6.3 to 6.7 percent in the near term the slide in bond yields can be kept if global bond drought extends further since the u.s election outcome u.s treasury yields have hardened 50 bips and global yields have also reacted on upside from an equity market perspective demonetization can bring near-term turbulence in the economy gdp growth may slow down which can put pressure on earnings However, directionally in conjunction with GST, this is a big positive step for real estate organized space. This company should be able to grow faster than the unorganized players in the medium term due to their ability to deal with the formal system and better regulatory compliance. Hence, although earnings may be impacted near term, investors should be giving higher valuation to the same due to better growth prospects in the medium term. Recent corrections offer good opportunity for investors to increase equity exposure with 3 to 5 years view. As it is difficult to estimate the impact of demonetization on the earnings in the near term, investors can spread out their investments over the next three months. Global trade frictions resultant of Trump policies will be important source of volatility in investment flows. However, the medium term high liquidity, lower domestic interest rates may re-rate equity valuations. We continue to advise investors to allocate funds on the basis of respective liability profiling and durations. Employee benefit liabilities with high durations of more than 6 years should prefer some allocation to equities as risk appetite of the portfolio is higher, whereas liabilities with duration in the range of 3 to 6 years should continue to remain invested in bond funds. So that's it for today about recent developments in the bond market. See you in our next edition. Thank you.